Good morning from Rome. Buongiorno. <laughs> Buongiorno uh, to another episode of The Way We Saw It uh, in Rome. And uh, as you saw in the previous vlog, Rome is all about amazing landmarks and history and uh, beautiful monuments. But Rome is also about its, its districts, all these different parts of the city that really are like villages. And uh, there are many, many in Rome that actually then together form the whole city. Today we are in the district formed around the Via Giulia. Via Giulia is a thoroughfare which is about one kilometer long that goes from St. Peter's Cathedral to the Ponte Sistine and it's all cobblestone and this district has a very very strong history like most of the districts in Rome but this is a particularly like every building yeah particularly interesting district because it's in the very very center of Rome and has this typical village character so we will show you a little bit more about this district in Rome and Via Giulia actually is probably the safest city in uh, safest street in Rome because it hosts the general direction of anti-mafia and anti-terrorism and there's a lot of military and police around it we just saw a judge probably who just was brought in and there was police everywhere so we can really walk safely on this street Julia and the surroundings there's a lot of cafes and restaurants and osterias so this is a good occasion for us to have a coffee. So we are here just in the courtyard of the Via Giulia and the kind owner who's living here let me in and he said you have to film this and this is a typical example for old artifacts in Rome which has been reused many times for, for other purposes, or recycled even. So this used to be a sarcophag which has been turned into a water fountain here in this courtyard. And look how beautiful it's done. This very particular church on Via Giulia is called Santa Maria dell'Orazione e Morte. And actually, there was a confrerie that was established here whose job was to collect dead bodies from the Tiber, from unknown people who had drowned in the Tiber, and bury them. So that's why there are skulls on the facade, and there are even halls where you can put money in to give donations. It's a very unusual church. And on the southeast end of the Via Giulia, there is this fountain, and this is the fountain of the Mascherone. And the fountain of the Mascherone was built in, or designed in 1570, and only activated in 1626. And the idea was to bring water to the people of the area, or for the district. But the funny thing with this uh, fountain is that it was also used in special occasions, for example, when the new Grand Master of Malta was elected, uh, and the celebrations meant that instead of water, it distributed wine. At the beginning of the Via Giulia, uh, there is this church of the San John Baptist of the Florentines, which is a very, very sober and well-kept church. And the particularity here is that there is Mass in English on Sundays. And just behind, or next to the one church, is another church, which is called Santa Lucia del Giofone. And it's a beautiful church, as you just saw or see in the picture right now. Via Giulia was actually erected by the Pope Julius II in the early 16th century. That's where the name comes from, Giulia Julius. And uh, a part of the beautiful facades that you can see on the street, there's also beautiful courtyards. So 
if you manage to get a permission, you can go into some of the courtyards and film the interiors. They have fabulous gardens and fountains and all kinds of artifacts. And apparently very wealthy people live here and not, not many of them want to get their houses filmed anyway. We booked a table for tonight here at the Giulietta restaurant, which looks very fancy. So let's see if it stands up for the looks. And the plan of Julius the Pope was to build a thoroughfare through the old city of Rome and to create some kind of order in the medieval alleyways, alleyways of Rome. And one of the plans was also to build a, a courthouse, like a tribunale, in the center, to become a centerpiece of Via Giulia. But that house was never finished. The only thing that remains of that house or the building are these seats where I'm sitting on. And these have now became, become the sofas of Via Giulia. They have been adopted by the locals. And uh, these sofas now are part of the hotel we are staying, which is the Hotel Indigo St. George in Rome. These sofas are an, an integral part of the hotel. From the rooftop we have a great view. Look, St. Peter's Cathedral over there. Then the old town and all the way there you can see the teeth of Victor Emmanuel. That's the big typewriter, the Victor Emmanuel monument. Good morning from Rome. Plenty of is enjoying its breakfast because this hotel has breakfast until 11 in the morning and we just love that. No need to wake up for breakfast, just let yourself wake up naturally and enjoy a wonderful breakfast. And this hotel also has a gluten free corner for those who like that for breakfast. They have a lactose-free corner and a gluten-free corner, which is pretty smart because there's more and more people who fancy this. And after breakfast, we are heading to the Campo dei Fiori and to the Pantheon. This is very near to the Via Giulia area and the streets just behind the Via Giulia have little cafes and uh, bike shops and hipster cafes and little restaurants, which are very appealing. So you are very centrally located in this area, but still you have this village feeling, which is so typical of Rome. We're now at Campo dei Fiori. This used to be a very lively market square. It still has some uh, who are surviving, the masses of tourists. There's a lot of junk being sold here, but also nice vegetables, nice fruits, and especially really beautiful flowers. This is the square with the obelisk of the elephant and obelisk. And this obelisk was actually found in the 17th century in a garden of a church. And the Pope's Alexander VII, I think, said to the artist, make a little sockle to it. And he created this elephant sockle. And since then it has been standing here in front of the church of the Santa Maria uh, Sopra Minerva, which we're gonna look now. And after this, we're going to go to the Pantheon, which is just around the corner here. This is about 15 minutes from our hotel uh, on foot. Of course, a little bit more touristic area, but the area where we live is really good for visiting uh, the center of Rome. This was the way we saw it in Rome, our second video from Rome. Thank you for watching. Keep watching us uh, during our tour in Italy. Uh, safe travels always. Bye.